comes up, a pretty big dude, and he, he goes, oh, my gosh, you're the ghost boy. I thought, uh-huh. And he gave me this big bear hug. I'm thinking, oh, I'll call the police. You know, and he, <laughs> he says to me, he says, you know, when I was a kid, I heard about you in the papers. You're my hero. You're up in New York. I wanted to, I wanted to be you. I wanted to see through your eyes. I wanted to know what you're experiencing. I wish I could have been there. And I used to wrestle, and I used to say to people, I'm the ghost boy with my headlocks and things. What was it like? And so I told him how tough it was. And, but you know what I realized from that? I realized that in those moments of, of darkness, when I was in the college sometimes, thinking I was caught forever, there were some I didn't even know. I didn't know, who didn't know me, hundreds of miles away, out of state, hoping for me, praying for me, cheering for me. What an understanding that is. What an understanding to know that even if you're having a tough time, there's always somebody out there who can help you, who's willing to put a hand out. It's nice to know that if you allow yourself the opportunity, people will help. And it's it's such it's a, it's a, it's a gratifying thing. So although I didn't know what was happening with the whole ghost boy thing, again, it's just people found value that this story was true. Because sometimes you hear stories, people go, ah, like very witch, you know. But I guess me being real, <laughs> whatever that means, or <laughs> was kind of cool for people because it's almost like a fairy tale, you know, where that actually happens sometimes. Well, that's a... That's a good analogy because when you came up to do your symposium and I tried so hard to get there, I think right. that was just the neatest thing that I'd ever heard of. I would like you to share about that because the odds of this even happening were slim and none up until <laughs> the book and up until, you know, people started talking again, here and there, but you actually put together an experience for people at the university to to come and learn about you and your experience and learn and speak with y'all, everybody that had been involved, and to kind of educate people on what your experience was. Well, uh, you give me too much credit, but I thank you. Um the the 30th anniversary symposium was took place at the college where the haunting was back in 1985 and although i was a a key speaker there again it, it was it was people around me who supported this you know, we were we got um sponsorship by ghost detectives by rolling hills asylum mm -hmm. We got sponsorships. We, Bill Edwards ran the event. Uh, Mark Atria ran the symposium where you had the collective round table. We had, we had speakers uh, like Gail Kazmarek, who was the very first person to analyze the ghost photograph 20 some odd years ago. We had Linda there, Linda Fox, who was in the pictures being held down in her bed, who for the very first time spoke about these things. We had Father Charlie Manning, the priest who did the blessing, who was still with us. I was so happy about that, you know, talk a little about what he had done. So it's just such an amazing thing to have happened. We had Mason Winfield, who's a Western New York expert and gives ghost walks. We had Chip Reichenthal, Rosalind Bound, John Tobin, Dave Lee, Matthew Haas. I mean, Mark Henry, it was incredible what they did, you know, and... Uh, so that, that came to be at the college, and it was amazing to sit basically where Lorraine and Ed had stood. <laughs> I didn't my, realize oh, that, so it kind of came full circle. We weren't very far from that exact spot was, and so wow. it's ironic to think, oh my gosh, when, when Jeff and I sat in that crowd listening to Ed and Lorraine Warren speak, I remember saying to Jeff, you know, I could never do that. I could never get in front of people and talk about ghosts. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. <laughs> And so ironic, so ironic that that's exactly what happened. And I couldn't help but wonder, as I looked out across the audience who was there, if maybe there's some college kid in the audience then who might some to be saying, I could never do that, who maybe someday will. It's interesting how life has those those cycles. But in any event, it was so cool to hear what my co-survivors, if you want to call them that, had to say. We got to talk about things you never talked about. It had been, in some cases, 30 years since we had a conversation. We sometimes never talked talk again, so it's like a legitimacy to that in terms of like investigation or, or research, you know. And I got to find out more about why they said what they said or me, what I did, and it filled in some of that, that puzzle, you know. And it was such an amazing thing. And if people want to take a look, I believe it's posted that roundtable discussion 
And that included that uh, Paul Davey and Craig Norris, um, Mara uh, ran that, Jeff Unger, myself, uh, Linda Fox, Father Charlie Manning. We're all there talking uh, there about the experience of the first time ever. I believe it's uh, CETA, C-I-T-A, CETAproductions.com. And they can go there and they have a section of a third anniversary and you actually listen to uh, people talk for the first time. It's a very emotional thing. It was, it was, it's fascinating. So if they'd like to do that, they can, they can do that. And again, that's the, the beautiful things that Bill and Mar and, and folks like that do. You know, they just, they've just they always been there to find value in what had happened. And I, I feel kind of bad, Kat, because I, I really feel as though over the years I've gotten too much of the focus. It's been too much about me and less about the people who actually make these things occur. You know, and I always try to thank the best I can, but, you know, you, you can't always control how people react to things. So I'm just thankful that well, you people, can't. Still, you know, yeah. And, you know, all of them, I'm certain all of them know that, that you appreciate them because the ones who were there then are who got you through it. And Mara and Bill and the other people that have been who have become a part of this experience recognize that and I'm sure they appreciate having the chance to interact with everyone and learn more about it because it didn't happen in a vacuum but right. you kind of were the the impetus of the experience yeah, I was the focal point and that's kind of cool but just like anything else, you know, most things take a team. And, and again, I just I want I want people to know, I, I need to have people know that they are, even if they're behind the scenes somewhat or don't get the same accolades that, that I receive, all these people are as important as I am in sharing the events of 1985, you know, and um, I, am, I am so grateful. Well, I mean, they pulled you through it. They helped yeah. you through it. And I agree. That's I have I've only interviewed Mara and Jeff right. in the past. And well as well as you. And one thing that I will say is that without fail, they are so supportive of you. Yes. And they know how difficult that was for you and they appreciate how difficult that was for you. And they also know their role. In, in your experience and I think that's neat because you do take everybody along with you you do give credit where credit is due and you appreciate the people that's just part of why you're so cool and <laughs> nothing happened to you that didn't happen to everyone right, yeah, they were right. all part of it so I did have a question though and I hope that I can remember it but when you talk about about Charlie Manning Y'all, you and Jeff had gone to him with what seemed like just an amazing tale. You know, it wasn't something that was automatically just accepted as fact, was it? No, I, I want to make a slight a correction in that it was myself and Paul who went Paul, to see Fox I'm sorry. Charlie. Yes. But we took with us Jeff's notes, right? Because Jeff's notes allowed him to read what happened, not me having to say it, relive it again. So you're, you're not you're you're on the right track, and what you're understanding is just a slight change in case people are listening who were there. Right. But um, yeah. And so I, years later, Charlie Manning, the the, the now retired uh, priest pastor, he, he was asked, you know, why'd you help them? Why'd you believe them? Because I didn't know if he would believe us. And he read every page of those notes, you know, and he said it was two things. Number one, he saw, he saw the fear in, in Paul's eyes when, when we were speaking to him after he read the notes. And he said that I was literally shaking. I was literally like trembling from fear in front of him. And so he knew not necessarily what was going on, but that something was going on. He wanted to help. Right. You know, and uh, so he asked questions to try to root things out. You know, were you guys drinking? No. Were you doing drugs? No. So he just, once he, he, came to the conclusion that we were being serious about this, then, you know, he, and I said to him, listen, father, I, I'm a Catholic and, and for a Catholic to play a joke in a priest is, would be horrific. I would never do that. I think that kind of maybe convinced him that we, you know, we were sincere. And then a few days later, he went down to the room and he began this procedure, this blessing where, uh, he had, um, 
holy water. You had candles to put down. It was it wasn't like on TV with fire and blood and demon spit and pea soup at all. It wasn't like that. It was it was a very peaceful experience. Like the missus going to the room and who sang his prayers and it it felt calm, you know. And the clock stopped flashing and the voices stopped and the light got a little brighter and the room got warmer. It was an amazing thing. I wish I could explain it better, but I think you get the idea of it. And uh, at the end of the the uh, ceremony, he said to me, you know, okay, we're good. And I said, can you get back in? Because <laughs> I was petrified. He goes, only if you invite it back in. And that was good. And he said to me, listen, if you, if you need more help, let me know. But I couldn't go back to him because here's the thing. It worked. The blessing he did worked for that room. But then the ghost went elsewhere. And you can't have a priest bless 25 college rooms or 30 rooms. It's, it's not functional. So after he did what he could do, which is a great thing, it restored my faith and everything, we had to go elsewhere to look to probably maybe solve this because you can't misuse what he had done. You know, it's, right. and, and we appreciate that. And we lo- I lost track of him, of course, and it wasn't until I was on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie, and I mentioned his name. I always thanked him. I don't know if he passed on 10 years ago or if he was still alive, but I always thanked him out loud in public for what he did. And it turns out he was in the hospital post-surgery, and they had the radio show on in his recovery room, and he heard me <laughs> on this radio show. I love that part. <laughs> Yes. I love he, that part. Turn that up. That's me. Turn that up. And so he sent me a, a, a message, a friend request or something, or a message, but I didn't wasn't with Facebook at the time. So it sat there for a week and a half. He's like, gee. And then finally I found it and I was so excited. I jumped up my chair and I, I called him and I was just effusive saying, oh my God, I'm so good you're alive. I'm so happy. You're such a wonderful person. You helped me so much. And then he said to me, well, you helped me too because you know I, I was a priest for a long time. You know, weddings and baptisms and ceremonies and all these things. And I'm in a retirement home now, and almost no one visits me. And to hear you thank me made me think it's all worth it too. So uh, wow. it's just wonderful when when people can share this commonality of, of gratefulness and of of appreciation. And I, I tell you again, and I'll say it again, I am so lucky. <laughs> I'm just so forced to be able to have this ability to reconnect with people who are there and relive that in a sense, go home. That's just a beautiful thing. I love that he was listening while you were on with George. What are the odds? I was on there one time in a yes. period of like five years. He just happened to be coming at that moment from surgery and it was in the hospital room and it was on the radio and boom. Oh, please. You don't need odds when it's God's hand. <laughs> right, so, right. I mean, you know. But I'm learning. <laughs> that was just it. And we are just about to go to our final break. And we will be back. We hope you enjoy this. And this will be about two minutes and then we'll be right back. WBHM Digital Broadcasting The Best in Paranormal Talk Only on Paranormal Experienced Radio Broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama And we are back 
for our final segment of Fate Radio tonight with Chris DeCesare. And I've got to tell you, he has just shared what truly is my favorite part 